So first thing we're gonna talk about is, and this is gonna be Melissa's part. Melissa is gonna talk about is now the right time to sell in today's market. And in addition, if it is the right time, what is it that we can do to protect our sellers in a way that's gonna minimize their risk toward the, towards the virus? So with that being said, I wanna start by giving the floor to Melissa and asking you one question. Based on what we know is happening in the market today, is now the right time to sell? Uh, yes. Hi, Anthony. Uh, thank you. That is such a very important question. I think for all of us, is it time? Uh, is it the right time uh, with the crisis that we are facing all over the country to sell our home? And for me, the answer the answer for a lot of my clients now is yes. Um, and if it is yes, uh, here are just a few ways that we are prepping our sellers for the market uh, here. In, now, I just want to before I get going, that I do want to express that anything that I do say here um, expressively is is my own personal opinion and something that has worked really good for me okay so uh, also having a nursing background myself prior to real estate I am very very passionate about the importance of safety uh, in our you know in our country and also all across the San Diego County so with that said let's let's get started um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I like to try to do is for the seller is identify how soon a seller needs to sell. I think that's the very first, you know, most important question to me. Why does the seller need to sell? Because if there's no motivation for the seller, you know, we need to find what that motivation is. Is now the right time or maybe we need to postpone? With that being said, then we go on to, you know, um, identifying where the seller is going and what are the best practices for the market that the buyer, um, that they're going to be buying in. Because what's going on here may be quite different than where uh, Samantha Friedman is, you know, or maybe somebody in New York or New Jersey, uh, something like that. So we all need to look at our CDC practice guidelines and kind of follow those. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to try to identify is where the seller is going, and I think I just said that, sorry. Acknowledge what's happening. Um, I think this is important for me, is acknowledging what's happening and don't try to play down the importance of the issues that we are all facing here in our country with this COVID-19. Also, don't create a panic conversation around things that are changing on a daily basis. There's probably 101 million answers and questions that opinions, you know, we all have them. And I think it's, it, you know, being, um, how do you say, being aware of what is happening out there in our market and knowing what questions to answer and what questions we leave to the professionals is something we need to really be, be cognizant of. Uh, the other thing is, is um, you know, assuring, <clears throat> assuring them that you will take every precautionary measure, and I do mean every precautionary measure, um, to ensure that everyone, for everyone's safety and, and well-being. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Then the other things that, um, that I want is like, how do we minimize the risks that are associated with showing, you know, your client's property? And for me, you've got to be very firm on emphasizing that everyone is responsible for bringing their, their own gloves, their wipes, you please don't rely on anyone else to bring them for you. Please be prepared, okay? Because, you know, supply and demand is so short right now that we really don't have the opportunity to go to the store and pick up gloves and sanitizers, you know, for everybody. But we certainly will do our very best to protect the people that do come. Making sure the agents um, and their client clients are adhering strictly to the social distancing guidelines while maintaining a safe distance of six feet apart from each other. That includes your buyers, you know, your, your agent, your the listing agent, or, or you should really have no more than two people in a house at one given time. That is part of the CDC rules and guidelines here for Southern California, and I don't know if those are different any place else, but here they are. So please get a copy of your CDC guidelines and follow those. So, um, and then anyone that is planning to show a property shall provide for me, um, and what we require here and for Stephen as well is that we need to be able to provide a declaration to um, so that you know, that, they're, that the people that are coming in to look at the property, one, are not sick. Number two, that they're swearing that they haven't been outside of the country in the last two to four weeks, um, you know, traveled outside the country. 
asking all of the vendors. So what we're doing is we're asking them to sign a declaration, um, Stephen and Anthony. Therefore, we can actually put that in a file and it protects the seller, right? These people are coming in at their own risk. They understand that we're putting this notice up on the door that they are entering at their own risk, you know, and, um, and that this is to be taken very seriously. One, it's going to protect the seller. And number two, it's also going to protect the buyer as well. And, and the agent myself is a list pre predominantly listing agent or a buyer's agent. So those are just some of the things that we do. Um, I ask that all my vendors, uh, I ask them what their safety protocols are because not everybody is, you know, practicing safe uh, protocols. Uh, and if they are not practicing safe protocols, then they're not a vendor that I use. Okay, it's too much liability for my seller. So um, I also ask them uh, for a waiver with the instruction for entering the home and I get it signed before they enter the property. That is very reassuring, number one. My it makes my sellers very happy because they know that I have them as a top priority, okay? Um, least but not last, ask appraisers what, practice, what, what are their best practices um, that they are using to appraise uh, the property. And in, in most cases, right now, what we're seeing is not actually going inside. In fact, what they're doing is with photos and descriptions and things like that. Um, you know, before they even, uh oh, uh, the connection. Can you guys hear me? It says that uh, the connection. We, we can is, hear you now. Yeah, you're good now. Okay. All right, I'm so sorry, you guys. All right. Um, it's okay, take it back about 30 seconds. All right, thanks. somebody said that it's better. Thanks a lot, Karen. Um, offer to put together sales comparisons for your, for your you know, appraisers. I think it's very helpful. It takes a lot of that stress off of them and provide them with videos of you know, the inside of the property, uh, which also helps keep safe practices. Uh, not only for them, but also again reassuring the seller that you know we're doing everything precautionary that we can. Um, I mean, years ago, 26 years ago, when I started, it, 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 appraisers actually didn't go. A lot of them didn't even go into the house. They actually physically just drove by, you know, and did that approach process, which I thought was kind of odd, but it, it happened. So it's really no different. It's just not a lot of people are you know used to that. I would say. So kind of wrapping up going down, it says, what are the best practices that, that are related uh, to entering a seller's property? This is really, really important. So the listing agents should never leave their brochures or their flyers um, inside the property, okay? Um, all showings should be held by appointment only. We should not be having lock boxes. We should be putting CVS codes um, on there so that they just don't get to come and go as they please. Um, that they are by appointment only. Um, sellers are to be advised not to be present within a dwelling at the same time during the showing. That's very, very important because again, we have to use that two-person safety rule, okay? Um, to the extent possible, um, the use of various third-party service providers that we all use for non-essential services avoid now. And where avoid where um, unavoidable, those providers must agree again to sign an agreement to follow your local CDC guidelines. Very, very, very important. Okay. For myself, my sellers uh, recently have asked, how are you going to market my property in this in this market? Okay. How are you going to market my property? And I think that's been kind of an interesting twist for myself because I am certainly not social media. I'm not a, a big guru on that kind of stuff. So it's been a little bit of a challenge, actually kind of fun. Um, but one, post a, buy, post a virtual open house with specific times that are available to the public, just like you would a regular open house, except without leaving your home. So that's kind of interesting. You want to call your local agents in, you know, in your own county, county, um, on all of your new listings that are coming soon, boosting social media ads, I found that it's really important. I've got a lot of feedback from those recently. And also taking photography using video-based systems, such as 
virtual 3D tours. I've, I got my first one today for a property that's going live this week, and I'm super excited. It really actually looks pretty good. Um, and then the other things are um, the 3D showings at Facebook Live and watch parties. Those are all just some of the things that you can do to help market the property without people physically going inside of the home. Again, keeping within those safety protocols. So the other, the last um, is that how are we addressing? How are we as listing agents addressing the escrow process? Um, you know, the escrow, the lenders, and the title, because as you know, all over the country, there are various places just are not doing business. So um, for us, we are doing business. You know, we've been classified essential here in San Diego, at least for the time being. Um, uh, luckily for all of us, uh, we have escrow that are um, remote from home, which is great. And our lenders are also remote from home, which has been great. And we've actually seen now I'm in a, in a uh, contract with a buyer where we get to close in 21 days. So that's, you know, we're still, we're still there. You know, we're still really seeing great things happening. Uh, let's see, what else was it? Um, all activities, if at all possible, should be done electronically, okay? Uh, where permitted, you know, for you. Use a courier service when possible. A lot of our escrow officers are using courier services or they're using electronic notaries where they're available in your market. Um, I'm actually gonna put together a little pamphlet and kind of put it you know, put everything together and kind of, you know, set it up to where I can send it out to people so they know what questions to ask and what things that they can do to kind of help them in their own market. So, the last thing for me, um, see, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can, we can hear you a little bit better now. I think it's reconnecting. You were okay. saying the last thing? <laughs> It's, hold on, my uh, internet connection is unstable. As I don't know. Can you guys hear me okay? It's a little bit choppy right now. We're uh, that that's from the feedback that we're getting. So I think you're good now. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good now. Yeah. Okay. So if a seller um, wishes to hold off, what do you do in that case? And I think a lot of people are panicking. Don't panic. Get the contract, get the listing agreement signed right away, okay? If you have to put in a number, just kind of stall for a little while, then just put in a, 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 a listing number. That can always be changed, right? So get the listing agreement signed. That way you've got that in writing and you've got that in. The other thing is, is email a pre-checklist um, out of recommendations that can help you know, speed things along for your clients, for your sellers. You know, they want the help because right now they don't know what to do either. You know, we need to be calm in the midst of the storm for them. Uh, when you're ready to put, put it on the market in the upcoming months, uh, come up a couple of things, get your lawn maintenance cared for, get your landscape in order, you know, declutter your home, um, your painting, get all those things done now, which is, I've got three people, three, three sellers that are doing exactly what I'm, I'm saying, because once it's done, boom, we're going, we're going to go live. Um, get your pre-inspections done. I'm really finding this to be very helpful. Um, to kick through on out is because the pre-inspection is going to notify the buyer ahead of time that hey these are some of the things that need to be addressed and we are going to address them okay um for staging purposes this is the very last thing but um i'm very huge on physically staging a home however because of the conditions that we are in right now i am opting for online virtual staging which is usually between $28 to $38 per room, which is absolutely amazing. Opt to do those types of things. Again, eliminating as much exposure to your seller as you possibly can. So with that being said, that is pretty much all I have. I mean, there's a thousand more words, but I think everybody will get the gist of this. We want to protect everybody um, in this market. And I think that we've got these three people here specifically that are rock stars, <laughs> Anthony Manzon and Stephen Hurd. Um, I, I appreciate you guys very much. 
I really do. Yeah. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Joining thank, today, you. thank you. Yeah. For everything you shared, because, you know, I think as agents, we all once had a job that was already pretty difficult, you know, navigate the transaction for every transaction. Yeah. I think the number is every, there's 26 people involved in every single transaction. So already that's already a pretty daunting task. And now Absolutely. we still have to do that same task. Now we have to not interact with people face to face and we have to go hundred percent virtual and yeah. we have to keep in mind everyone's safety and their family's safety. So the job has drastically changed and the process of real estate has also changed. And so Absolutely. the things that Melissa shared, I know a lot of you guys are thinking it, I was thinking it also too, for all these extra things that you have to do for your seller, is it gonna scare buyers away? Are you gonna get less showings? If they have to sign this declaration or send a pre-approval letter before showing the property, is that gonna reduce the amount of showings of the property? I think the mm -hmm. answer is absolutely yes. However, in this market, it's not about the qual quantity anymore of how many people are going into the house. When we talk about safety, it's about the quality. So you'd much rather have the one or two people come into the house that you can vet for that have signed the declaration, sent their pre-approval letter, you've sent the virtual walkthrough, you sent the general inspection, then after all of those things have already be, been done, then they get the physical showing. That's a much more qualified buyer that you want in the property rather than having the 100 person open houses that we've been used to that we've all built our business off of. So Absolutely. that's a concern. And yet we have to shift our mindsets as agents. It's no longer how many people can we get in? What's the most? It's about the quality of people that we're getting in there. And we're going to disqualify mm -hmm. a lot of buyers coming into properties. However, if the number one thing for us is keeping our clients safe, keeping our clients' family safe and us safe, that's more important than getting that group of 10 people that came in to see their competition, create the emotional bidding war and get people into the property. It's much more important. 100%, totally agree. Cool, cool, awesome. Any questions for her, Steven? No, no, I think you did a great job of summarizing it, Melissa. And I think the main thing that we're all getting out of this is, you know, number one, as Anthony said, our job is now not only to market the home and not only to find a buyer virtually, but our job is also to protect our clients and keep it safe. And so I think as an agent, you really, really have to embrace that new role and just take it one day at a time, but learn and think through the ways that you can make it safe. So I think you did a good job with that, Melissa. Um, Anthony, I'm, I'm really interested to hear from you. I mean, she's talked about on the seller end, right, how it's going to affect sellers. But what if I'm a buyer? What if I'm out wanting to look at property? Is now the right time to buy for me? I mean, should I really do it now? Should I wait? Give me some advice. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're getting it, Stephen. I'm sure you're getting it, Melissa. I've probably gotten more conversations of people reaching out to me than ever asking, is now the right time to buy? Is now the right time to sell? And as agents, our job is to present data and give them all the information to make the best decision for them and their family. So let's look at like the evidence that we have right now to show why it's a good time and why it's not a great time to buy. So if now is a great time to buy, what are the reasons? Number one, as crazy as interest rates went the past couple weeks or past week or two, they're still historically low. You know, we're hovering high threes, low fours. Were they at low threes last week? Yes. However, historically, we're still low. And according to my research, when rates are low, it's a good time to buy, even if prices are higher. So if we look at that, rates are low, yes. Also too, we have buyers and agents from all over the country on this webinar look at your area and look at the inventory for us here in san diego and stephen in orange county inventory is still low is it down from last year or a couple months ago yes however it's still low when you look at it historically and when rates are low and inventory is low it's a good time to buy even if you think that something's going to change in the market why because here's one thing that i know for sure if you continue to rent, 100% of the money that you're putting into the property is going into the garbage can. You're building zero equity. And so even though when we bought properties, let's say three years ago, four years ago, and we were seeing appreciation of, let's say, I don't know, four to 8% every single year, that's the appreciation you're having in that market. 
let's say that slows down to appreciation of 1% per year. 1% appreciation is still better than 100% of your money going to waste for rent. So that is my talk for buyers on thinking, is now the right time to buy? It's really going to depend on you. And for the most, the important question I'm asking my buyers who are buying is, look at your income and look at your job. If you honestly feel like that you are at risk of loss of hours, instability in your job, and possible job loss, then I am advising to hold off on buying at this time. Because nothing is worse than buying a property, putting it in your name, and going through all this, and then you lose, you lose hours, you lose your job, that's a scary thing to happen. So if there is that stability where maybe your lease is still nine months and you could wait, I would suggest wait just to see until this whole thing blows over, if there's instability in your job. Um, for buyers also too, there is added protection that the real estate um, is putting in for the buyers. So for instance, one of the new things that came out about uh, seven days ago is the new coronavirus addendum. And so for the buyers that don't know, in California, there was a new addendum created um, specific to the coronavirus, basically stating that the buyer and seller can agree, it's an addendum to the contract, and the buyer and seller can agree that due to unforeseen circumstances in the job or occupation, if the buyer and seller agree, they can cancel the transaction with no loss of their earnest money deposit. The only thing is lost is damages. For instance, um, if the seller had to pay for an appraisal or the buyer pays for an appraisal or the seller has to pay for this, there's a certain amount of gray area that they work out, but that's what they would get back. However, their practices and contracts now put in place to protect the buyer in case they do lose their job while they're in escrow. So um, there's a lot of other things. For me, the most important thing when I put this webinar on and I ask myself, is now the right time to buy? We have to think to ourselves: we're actually answering two questions. Is, is now the right time to buy? Can we navigate the transaction in a way that's going to minimize the risk of spreading the virus? And is there a way where we can, number one, answer this question for our clients? Because our clients before were asking us this question before as agents. Are you the right agent for me? How much experience do you have? Are you a good negotiator? Are you good at communicating? Like those were the main things buyers and sellers were asking us. You know what the number one question probably is now? What are you doing in the transaction to protect me and my family from getting sick or possibly getting sick? So as an agent, we need to think to ourselves, if that's the number one question now, aside from everything else that we are as real estate agents, how are we going to minimize the risk and keep their family safe during this transaction? What is it that we're going to do? And so I'm going to go over some of those things with you guys now on what my team and I are doing to protect our buyers and also protect the sellers on the other side to minimize the risk of spreading and all that crazy stuff that possibly could happen. So number one, I think it's obvious, we need to create a business that's gonna go 100% virtual. So when my team and I sat down and we thought, okay, we're restructuring the buying process. We don't know how long this quarantine is gonna be. Could it be a month? Could it be two months? Could it be three months? Could it be six months? We don't know and yet all we know is that if we're gonna to commit to real estate and we're saying, this is my occupation, this is my career, this is what I'm gonna do, you either, number one, have to either change your process to adapt to this market, or you're gonna sit on the sidelines and wait for this whole thing to go blow over. But the thing is, money is gonna run out eventually. And so you need to make that decision now. If you love your career and you love what you do, recommit to the business recommit to being a realtor and recommit to helping buyers and sellers transact in a way that's going to keep them safe. Because if you're uncertain, everyone's going to know it. And this market that we're shifting into, it really is survival of the fittest. Like only the strongest realtors are going to survive in this market. And if it continues to go the way it does, I wouldn't be surprised if 50% of agents get out of this business because they're not adapting their businesses. And so that's what we want to do today is get you guys ahead of the curve on what you can do to basically survive this market, be around for the turnaround. Because when the market turns, if you can take this market share and if you can be there long enough, when the market turns, you have all that market share to take. So Absolutely. let's get started. 
buyer consultation. Number one, everybody on the line now, commit to mastering the online buyer, uh, online buyer presentation. It doesn't matter which program you use, whether it's Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, whatever it is, have your process and practice it on your other agents, practice it on your family members, practice getting into the presentation because nothing is worse than saying, yes, I'm a 100% virtual agent, I'm a master in this market, I'm gonna protect you, then you're having all these connection issues and not knowing how to set up the presentation. So number one, commit to starting over, get those fundamental skills down. Um, so for my team, we've committed to using Zoom. And so it, we're paying, I think, $150 a month to have all the access of everything that we need to do to conduct our business for our virtual open houses, our virtual buyer presentations, whatever it is, you guys need to pick a method and commit to it and become a master of it because it's going to set you apart from the other agents that have not yet mastered it. Number two is the loan approval. Like Melissa said, align yourself with other people that have committed to this business and have committed to making it through this shift. Because I promise you, real estate agents are not the only ones that have to figure out the 100% virtual model. Loan officers have to figure it out, title officers have to figure out, and escrow officers. But are all of them gonna make it through this? No. So align yourself with people that can virtually conduct business alongside with you so that you can mitigate the risk of the spreading and truly create a business that's 100% virtual. Um, think about it this way, ask yourself the question, if I, were to, if I were to create a business with a model and a process that would make a buyer 100% comfortable buying the property without ever having stepped foot in there, what would that business look like? I know it's crazy. There's probably a lot of people on the line right now thinking that that would never happen. Buyers have to step in there at least once to buy the property. Yes, there's always going to be those buyers. However, if you create your processes to create so much safety and security for your buyers, that they don't ever have to go in there. And maybe it is one time, but at least everybody underneath that, that 90% virtual, 80% virtual, 70% virtual, everybody underneath will fall into that if you create the systems and processes that can make it 100% virtual. So virtual buyer presentation, align yourself with loan officers that can go 100% virtual. For showings, one thing that I'm doing is having conversations with the agent. So the days of, hey, can I show a property? Sure, go there. Like, that's over. Like, you need to call the agent and say, hey, my buyer is approved for this. Or, hey, what are some things you can tell me about the property that is not on the multiple listing service that I can share with my buyer? You almost have to disqualify showings at this point because you want to minimize the amount of showings you're, you're having your clients go through because it minimizes their exposure and the seller's exposure as well. So you need to take, do your part as an agent to find out all the little things about the property, share it with the buyer, and that way when they do make the decision to show the property, it's an easier decision because you already went through the entire thing. So get your buyer, buyer presentation really strong because if you know exactly what they're looking for and you can eliminate conversations and showings by just asking the agent based on their five deal breakers and their deal makers, It'll save you time, it'll save them time. More importantly, it puts their health and safety at number one. And trust me right now, buyers and sellers, that's the most important thing to them, is, is how are we gonna keep them safe during this time? Because if you can't keep them safe, they're not gonna buy or sell a house. So if you can keep them safe and handle that rejection, everything else underneath solves itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, very, let's see. Going into the escrow process for earnest money deposits, I'm hearing now that buyers can call their bank to set up the wire, so that can be 100% virtual. For inspections, what I'm doing now is I'm scheduling my inspectors to go to the property without me and my clients. And what the inspector is doing, we have our agreement already, is that he's gonna do his video walkthrough of the entire house, just like we're there. He's gonna save that video, send it to me and my buyers. We're gonna review that video together then based on that, any additional questions that come up, that's when we schedule the call with the inspector. There really is no need to have the buyers go to the property. If they insist on it and they want to, like you could set it up for them. However, just create your processes so they don't have to with their safety in mind. And mm -hmm. that will solve all the issues that they have. Um, okay. Final walkthrough, I would say just be a little bit more um, 
a little more cognizant of like the request for repairs, make sure everything's done before the final walkthrough. So there's no reason to go back again. And then one thing that I'm doing for my team is that because I know the number one question right now is how are we going to keep them and their family safe is we're offering a promotion to any buyers that buy or sell through us that once they close escrow, we're going to pay for an upgraded professional cleaning service to clean their property simply to handle the objection of, we don't know who was in the property before us. Was the inspector exposed? Was the agent exposed? Mm -hmm. We don't know. So my team and I were paying for all of our buyers to have their houses professionally cleaned before move in to handle that objection and to give them that comfort to move into the house. So those are just some of the things that we're doing. And yet keep in mind, the question is, how do you create a process that's 100% virtual that basically you can get everybody underneath to be comfortable? Now, Anthony, with some of the additional steps that you're taking in the buyer transaction and, you know, you're talking about, you know, paying for the home to be professionally cleaned and um, paying for the virtual tours and doing this and doing that, you know, I get that, right? And on the other end, everyone's telling us right now, you know, hey, you should save money. You should make sure to not spend any money. So how do you reconcile those two and, and what is your mindset behind that? Yeah, great question, Stephen. So for those who are buyers or sellers on this call, what all of our real estate coaches and webinars are saying are save all the money that you can get. Because as realtors, we're 100% commission. And if we don't sell, we don't make money. So save every dollar you can make. And Stephen's asking, if I'm paying for everyone's cleaning, mm -hmm. my margin goes down. Mm -hmm. What's more important, lasting the storm or making sure they're safe? And so one thing that I've identified is that as business owners, whether you're in real estate, restaurant, um, service providers, whatever it is, this virus is hitting everyone's profit margin. Nobody's profit margin is safe right now. Jamba Juice is delivering juice um, smoothies for free right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're breaking even or barely making $100 a month. However, everyone's going in with this mindset. Stick around long enough. Stick around for the turnaround. And for you, if that means the difference between, hey, your profit margin was once 30% for every transaction and now it's 25, 25% is better than that 30 because if you can't solve the question for the buyer, is the house going to be safe to move in? Nothing else is important to them. It's kind of like when you meet with a seller and you tell them a price that you think it's going to sell for and and they don't agree with you, you don't go further into the listing presentation with them in disagreement on the price because all they're thinking about in marketing and all that is, that's not the price I want. That's not the price I want. That's not the price I want. Same thing for buyers. If you don't mm -hmm. handle the safety and health concerns for them upfront, nothing else matters. Rates low, they don't care. Low inventory, they don't care. Are they renting and they're wasting 100% of their money? Yes, like they don't care about that stuff unless you handle the number one question, can you keep my family and I safe during this transaction? And once we move in, what are the things that you're gonna do to keep us safe? Answer that, then, then everything else becomes relevant. If you don't answer that, nothing is relevant until that is answered. Totally agree. That's a great point, Anthony. And I love your, I love your mindset behind that. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, right now is not the time to focus on making a big profit. Now's the time to focus on how can I be contributing to the community? How can I be keeping them safe? Um, so, so that's great. Was there anything else you wanted to cover on the buyer point, Anthony? Um, you know what? I, I think as agents, like we always want to focus on listings. The buyers are there. Like, remember why we all got into real estate. You know, I think as agents, when I go back mm -hmm. to committing, like recommitting to this, like we all got into this because we want to help buyers and sellers. Like we want to yes. help people. And if that wasn't your reason initially, it became your reason after you started helping people and seeing the smiles on their faces and seeing the equity and their family grow and the leg legacies being created. And so we need to remember we're here to help people first and as a byproduct, you'll make money as long as you can help these people. And so like, just commit, like everybody recommit to changing right now, because if you don't, I've had a lot of agents reaching out to me already saying my business was built on open houses and I can't do open houses anymore. So I'm quitting. It's because they didn't commit to the business. They committed to open houses. 
you know? So right. commit to the business, yeah. commit to yourself, commit to making it, and we'll all get past this on the other side. That's great. I really, really, really like what you just said about that, Anthony. It's very important for all of us to keep in mind that, you know, it's, um, it, it, this is time to to bunker down and 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 really take a look at all the things that are important in our in our families and in our life and cutting our expenses the best we can and finding ways through people to um, to make this as virtual as possible. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. So let's get into Stephen now. So Stephen, I'm going to introduce him. He is from Orange County. He's an amazing agent, good friend of mine. I've known him forever. And what he's going to talk about, his portion is geared towards real estate agents. And so he's going to talk about best practices, how to weather the storm, how to create a big business and make it through to the other side. So Stephen, take it away, bud. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, I'm super excited. So the first question that I'm going to address with everyone is, um, is how can I build my business through a quarantine, right? And, and I think there's, there's two quotes that really come to mind right now. And it's a, one of them is a quote by Mark Twain. And he said, there's two important days in your life. The first one is the day you're born. And the second is the day you find out why. And I think it's really, really critical right now that agents know why you're in the real estate business. For myself, you know, my father was an investor and he bought 16 properties, paid them off and was able to retire off that income. And, you know, for me, that was such an inspiring thing as a kid to see him buy real estate and sell real estate and make a profit outside of his normal day-to-day -day job. And I really realized something at that time, that real estate is the only method by which the average man or woman is ever going to achieve real financial success. The average person is never going to master the stock market. The average person's never going to do these complicated investments, right? So that's why I'm in this business. And there's always opportunities, whether the market's up or down. So for agents, should you build your business through the quarantine, ask yourself, why is your purpose? Because you can't sleep without helping people and making their lives better via real estate, or are you in it to make money? If you're in it to make money, then, then you should have that conversation with yourself and you should consider another career right now. Um, the second thing that I would tell agents is a quote from Martin Luther King. And he said, you know, when you can't run, walk. When you can't walk, uh, you know, crawl. And it's like, you have to start somewhere. Whatever you can do right now, start somewhere. So right now, maybe you can't do open houses, but you can make one call to your sphere of influence every day. Maybe you can't go out door knock, but you can do something every day to build your business. So, so my question, my answer to the question, should I build my business through the, the quarantine is, do I have a strong enough why? Do I really want to help people? Is it, is it an altruistic thing where I want to see them have a good transaction? Or is it about money? And if it's about money, there's not going to be much of that over the next year. So you got to get really clear on that. And then number two, um, where can I start? What can I do based on my current means, right? If I don't have a lot of money, I might not be able to farm right now. And yet I can social media, I can do things like that. So with that being said, let's say you want to stay in the real estate business right now. How are you going to build your business? The first thing that you have to do is you have to master a virtual lead gen strategy. So if you haven't read the great book by Spencer Johnson, who moved my cheese, then you have to learn story uh, that uh, it's, it's a very simple story and long story short you know one per, one of the mice is going to a place where they where cheese was always there and one day that cheese was not there anymore and so he just started complaining why isn't it there why isn't it there the other mouse went over and found another source of cheese and that's what you have to do right now open houses are not yielding the same results so ask yourself what based on my strengths and my expertise where can I get business virtually? So I'm going to give you guys some of the best strategies that I've been using that, that my mind was blown actually how well they worked in the last couple of weeks. Number one is meetup.com. Okay. It costs about $21 a month, $23 a month to become a host on meetup.com. What I did is I actually started a meetup group called COVID-19 and real estate. Now, before this COVID-19 thing happened, if I hosted a real estate meetup group, nobody would have shown up. 
for a real estate one. They were mostly showing up to personal ones. In this one, I had 57 people sign up in the first week. And not only that, they gave a lot of them gave me their contact information and identified as a home buyer or a home seller. So ask yourself, how can I come from value? And is there a group that I can start on meetupgroup.com? And let me make it really simple for you. Um, are you a mom with kids that you're homeschooling right now? You need to start a meetup group called virtual, a virtual mom support group who homeschools kids. Um, are you uh, somebody right now that's looking to do at-home home improvements uh, and you're a really handy person? You need to start a meetup group called Tips for Doing At-Home uh, Maintenance, right? And you need to build a virtual tribe of people, and that is your new sphere of influence. And from there, you are going to be really interested in connecting with all these people, and they're naturally going to ask you about real estate and what your business is. So meetupgroup.com, I think, is the biggest opportunity right now because while people are social distancing, they're really, if we're honest, they're craving connection more than ever. We're not satisfied with social media. We're not satisfied hanging out at home. We want to relate to people. And who do we want to relate to? People that are just like us. So if you like to play guitar, if you like to do stuff at home, if you like puzzles, Start a meetup group and do a virtual Zoom meeting once a week and focus on building that community. The second online virtual lead gen strategy is Facebook groups. Let me ask you a question. How many Facebook groups have you been invited to in the past two weeks? For myself, I have been invited to a new Facebook group almost every two hours. I mean, dear God, how many groups can I possibly be part of, right? So there's a reason all these people are inviting you to groups because they know something is that the preferred method of hangout these days is Facebook groups. That's where people want to go and post and get answers. So, so having said that, ask yourself again, same strategy as meetup. Maybe you create a Facebook group to supplement your meetup group. So you start the meetup group, you create connections with all these people. And then you say, Hey guys, I'm going to be posting some daily videos in my Facebook group, um, COVID-19 and real estate. Go ahead and join here, right? So, so that's the second opportunity is Facebook groups. Again, this is a real blessing in disguise that, that nobody's really pointing out right now. We're moving into a time where sales used to be, you know, you call the client, you qualify them, and you try to get the sale. Now, sales is becoming a place where I find something I'm passionate about. I see that you're passionate about it. So let's start hanging out together and create a community around that. What a blessing that is. You can actually just be yourself and attract clients right now. So you need to be really good at creating a virtual tribe. Lastly, your digital online strategy, nextdoor.com. You need to be the expert in nextdoor.com. Now, this is one that I personally haven't been using myself to my own detriment. And yet I've seen some of my competitors absolutely kill it on there because they have branded themselves as a local professional. So from a digital strategy, that's going to be something that I'm going to be using soon. Uh, Karen Castro said next door is amazing, right? So she obviously has experience from it. In fact, if you're watching this and you're on nextdoor.com, um, comment below. Yes. Do I get, do I, do I trust recommendations from next door? Do I get referrals from there? Or no, I like to go to other places. So just comment yes or no if you're watching. So I said that, nextdoor.com is a great strategy. So find your virtual lead gen strategy, and it's going to be meetup groups. It's going to be next door. It's going to be Facebook groups. But whatever you do, narrow in on something you're truly passionate about. Because what, what's not uh, a passion of yours will not be continued in the social realm. You'll get bored after a while and you'll say, that's enough, right? So that's the first thing you got to do is, is get that virtual lead gen strategy. I know this is a really simple statement, but in order for you to make money and get business, you have to have leads. And if, if open houses were the way of getting leads, acknowledge that that was a season and be grateful for that season. And now that that season's over, you take what you learned from that season so you can be better in the next season. And what you're going to find out is that this whole digital realm, while it's very challenging and difficult to embrace, it's going to bring about more connection than you ever imagined. 
Have you seen how connected we are as a country in the last three weeks? I mean, I have never been so informed on what's happening in my government and this and that. You know, Governor, uh, the government, Gavin Newsom, governor of California, partnered with Facebook today to do a Facebook Live to talk about the real up-to-date things that are happening. So this is the kind of cre connection and community we're, we're creating. Obviously, when all this is over, it's going to be great to hang out. But right now, you can reach hundreds of people that share your common interest. So recognize it as a blessing. The second thing you want to do is you want to master the virtual meeting. Guys and gals, if you're watching this, there are some real complications with doing virtual meetings. Right now, I'm at my house. If my dog decides he's going to go absolutely nuts, I've got no control over that, right? So I'm just praying none of my neighbors walk by. So you really have to get good at virtual meetings. Make friends with the mute button. If you start a virtual meeting and you hear someone and their background is just so bad, put that person on mute right away. Do it for the rest of the group. This is a time where you really actually need to have some leadership skills if you're going to conduct a good virtual meeting, okay? So how do you conduct a good virtual meeting? You start every meeting with a purpose. You start every meeting with a goal. Hey, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I am beyond excited at the opportunity to help you sell your home. The, the first goal that I have here today is to really understand what's important to you in this process so that I can help make that happen for you. So you want to state your goal in the beginning of the meeting. Once everyone knows the goal, they all start to act in alignment with the goal. Okay, so begin with the end in mind. The second thing that you want to do is you want to create engagement through questions. You see, as we're all talking right now, distractions are coming up. There might be notifications on Anthony's computer. There might be text messages coming in on Melissa's phone. That's the challenge of a virtual meeting. I might check my phone on a virtual meeting, whereas I would have never done that in person. So you have to ask a lot of questions to create engagement. You know, Mr. Seller, based on what we've discussed in your local market, what are your thoughts on what's going to happen in the next three months? And then you just get quiet, right? Because you want to create engagement. You want to make sure they're engaged in the conversation. How are you going to show your listing presentation? You're going to use Zoom and you're going to do a screen share. So the same way you would give a listing presentation, you're just going to do it via a screen share. Now, the, the ability of someone to pay attention on Zoom versus in person is going to really diminish. So you're going to need to cut to the fat and, and get to it right away. Mr. Seller, this is what's happening in the market. These are the costs. These are the challenges that we could see. What are your thoughts on that, et cetera, et cetera. This is not the time to talk about how passionate you are about your horses, right, or how many dogs you have or whatnot. You really need to make good use of people's time on a Zoom webinar. Obviously, when it comes to the listing agreement or purchase contracts, you're going to have them sign them digitally. And in your presentation, you're going to have a page where you're going to share how you can make it the content or the, the uh, transaction COVID-19 friendly. So, Mr. Seller, is safety important to you and your family? Absolutely. My number one goal in this process is to keep you and your family safe. Is it okay if I share with you now how I'm going to do that? You go through the plan. Can you see how that would keep your family safe? Do you have any questions or concerns about that plan? Don't? Wonderful. We'll move on. So that's one of the things that you're going to do. So after you master your virtual lead gen, you're going to start getting appointments. Now you're going to be mastering the virtual appointments, and that's what we just discussed. So the third thing that you have to do is now you really have to imagine a, uh, a, a real estate transaction that is virtual end-to-end. -end. Now, Anthony discussed that a little bit, so I'm not going to go too much in this point. But what I am going to ask you to do is take out a piece of paper over the next week and ask yourself, what are the current times that I meet with the client in person? And then a follow-up question. Okay, I usually meet with them at the home inspection. I usually meet with them at the showing. I usually, if I had to do those virtually, what would that look like? What additional technology would I have to purchase? What leverage would I have to use? 
So start thinking through that virtual strategy end to end. Anthony covered those points, so I won't bore you guys with the rest of that, but that's my challenge for everyone. Okay, another thing that you wanna look at is, um, is protecting yourself financially right now. In California, and, I, and for those of you who are watching this, um, go ahead and type a comment where you're at in the country. Are you, are you in Kansas, are you in Florida? Just say, I'm in Orange County, California, wherever you're at, so I, so I know where you guys are at. So uh, Eileen Lanza said, I'm in LA, Mike Law, Oahu. So we got people from all over the country right now. So because I'm in California, I'm gonna talk about that. So um, the California Association of Realtors just came out with a message and they said, here is your financial help hotline. So we actually have a dedicated hotline as realtors where we can call CAR Legal or, or the California Association and we can say, what are my options? You can likely get unemployment insurance right now. You can likely get an instant tax credit if you file for it right now. You can apply for a small business loan at no interest and some small business loans are forgivable. Here's the catch with all of this. These things run out, they're not unlimited funds. So the earlier you get there, the more likely you're gonna get the benefit. So if I'm an agent and I'm struggling financially and let's, let's get it all in the playing field, we are all gonna struggle financially over the next year. It's just a reality. So quit trying to act like you're all great with your BMW and your tuxedo because we, we've seen the Instagram photo and we know it's Photoshopped, all right? So let's just be real, okay? So if you're struggling, let's get some help and let's call out because the government is stepping in in a way where they never have before. And they're stepping in to help realtors. That's not something they've done in the past. So if they're helping you, this is the time to take advantage of that opportunity. Also, call your mortgage company and ask, what are your payment options right now? There's a difference between forbearance and payment deferral and, um, and, and a lot of different options that they offer. Right, so call them and see if you can work out a payment deferral plan, which would allow you to defer your payments for a few months and then they tack it on to the end of your loan. Um, Mike Law in, in San Diego said SBA.gov, that's where you go for loans. So if you wanna look up those loans, SBA.gov. Okay, so protect yourself financially, guys. That's one of the main things that you can do right now. You wanna keep yourself above water, okay? And, and so that's the most critical thing that you can do right now. What I recommend to everyone is you want to, looking into April, right? So it's March 30th today. We're going to be in April in a few days. Uh, let me check my calendar. We're going to be in April in two days, right? So, um, so having said that, what have I assigned my money to do? Dave Ramsey, the, the leading financial coach in America, says, tell your dollars what to do. Tell your dollars what to do. So look in April and say, where am I gonna put my money? And there should be two categories. So you list out all your expenses, car payments, groceries, insurance, um, you know, uh, medical, everything. And then you ask yourself, what category does it fall under? Essential, do I need it to survive? And do I need it for, my, uh, for the survival of my business? No, then it's non-essential. I don't need it to survive and I don't need it for my business. I love to get massages. I have a, um, a membership with Massage Envy. I think it's critical for health and it's a good thing. I cut that right away, right? Not essential right now. I can stretch and I can do things for free. So I'm looking through all my bills and I'm, and I'm asking myself not what can I add to it, what can I eliminate from it, okay? And what you'll find is during this time, let, let me just on a personal level, Ask yourself, how resourceful am I? How flexible am I? The more resourceful, the more flexible you are, the more successful you will be. Really successful agents and successful people, it's like Winston Churchill said, is uh, if you're walking through, if you're going through hell, keep going, right? Don't stop. And that's what's gonna happen right now. So just keep going forward every day, but be resourceful and be flexible. Um, I'll, I'll just be candid. The first five years of my career, I sold real estate and I had, I bought a, a Honda Accord, 2005 Honda Accord cash. I never, ever showed it to my clients. I would park, I was so, it was such an old car. It was not what my competition was driving. And I'd walk a quarter mile to my listing appointment. 
to get that listing. Because you have to do what you have to do with the finances you have. And I pay for cars cash, or I wanted to pay for my car cash. So I had to justify it with production. So having said that, maybe this is the time for us all to humble ourselves a little bit and maybe cut out some of the finer things that we thought and focus more on what we're grateful for. So get clear financially. The last thing in summary that I'm going to challenge you guys to is to really shift your mindset during this time. You guys, every shift is a gift. Some of your greatest insights, some of your greatest business practices, some of the best learning lessons you will ever have will come from this time right now. Have you ever gone through a hardship in your life and it was during that hardship that God or yourself or whatever, you learned something new or you opened your mind to a new concept and that changed your life forever? Absolutely. We don't grow through the good times. We grow through the valleys so that we can get to the next peak. So just remember, this is the valley. This is the peak. You need to go through this to get to this. If the peak was easy, everyone would be there, right? So having said that, that's your mindset right now. So number one, your routines right now are absolutely sacred. They are untouchable. When you wake up in the morning, do not check your phone. Do not let your family or anyone interrupt you. You tell your family, listen, from this time to this time, I am exercising. I am meditating. I am praying. I am researching the market. This is my time. This is the time that I'm going to devote to you so I can be fully present to you. When I'm off of work or when I'm on lunch, I'm 100% yours. But in the morning, I need to get ahead. So that's the time where you start your workout first thing in the morning, you meditate, and you do your market research. You, you want to really be an expert in the market, and that, we'll talk about that in my next point. So you, you keep your routines. When, when people go from um, you know, going to school every day for eight hours a day, and they stop going to school, uh, what do you think happens to them? They experience this kind of internal chaos right? Of, oh no, this is what I did every day. And now I'm not doing that. All of a sudden I'm really stressed out and scared. Well, the way to combat that is you keep the daily routine. So if every Friday night you hung out with your girlfriends, well, guess what? You keep that meeting and you're doing that over zoom. Now you want to keep those routines. So don't break what was working. <clears throat> now that you've got your routines in place, and, and you've got all that, you need to really be a market expert. I would say of a lot of the agents that I talk to, and, and Anthony uh, and Melissa, you guys tell me, of, of all the agents you talk to, what percentage do you feel really take being a market expert seriously? 10%. Uh, What's that? I said 10%. 10%, right? Now, isn't that interesting where um, we are paid in correlation to the expertise that we have mm -hmm. and only 10% of the agents are really becoming an expert of the market. Yeah. Now, now the, the challenge is it's not that they don't want to be an expert, Anthony. The challenge is, is they've never learned how to be an expert at anything. And so they don't actually know how to become an expert. So here's how you become an expert. Number one, you do research every single day. So before you open up your email, you should look at the new listings in your local MLS, okay? So I'm in, uh, my office is in Mission Viejo, California. That's the area that I really love to do business in. I serve, um, you know, all of Southern Orange County, California. But if I'm, you know, but that's an area where I really spend a lot of time in. So if, if I'm going to the office, I'm looking at the new listings in Mission Viejo, right? And so I want to see the new inventory that's available. That's 101, know your product. The second thing I want to do is I want to see the trend in two things, active sales and pending sales, right? Inventory, active sales is supply, pending sales, that's demand. What happens when supply goes down? Demand goes up. What happens when demand goes down? Supply goes up, right? So if you're not ahead of the market right now, you're actually behind it. If you touch with what's happening in the market, 
you're actually getting behind the market. So you need to know on a daily basis, where is the market going? For example, in Orange County, California, pending sales went down 7% in the last two weeks. Now, Anthony, would you say that's a big shift? That's a huge shift in one week. That's a huge shift in one week, in two weeks, right? That's a, that's a major shift. And so if I was to look at that, I would say, oh my gosh, the sky is falling. But what you also have to do is you have to look closer at the numbers, right? We have sales in, our, in, in Orange County that go upwards of $75 million. So when we're taking the whole county into account, yes, pending sales are down because a lot of that is luxury. However, the market under a million is still moving right now and we're still getting activity. Um, so, so, that, um, so that's something that you really got to pay attention to. Um, so having said that, know your market. I think uh, one, of the, one of the persons on the thing asked a question and said, um, you know, do you see massive inventory coming online suddenly when virus pandemic, virus pandemic passes? Uh, the answer to that is um, it's going to be a little bit challenging to tell, okay? Right now, what we're doing, and can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. My headset just died. Uh, so having said that, it's kind of like when you have someone in the, in the emergency room right now, and I pray to God that nobody's sick right now or nobody's watching this because anyone affected. But, you know, Melissa, you know, working in the hospital, right, as a nurse, when you see someone in the ER, what are you paying attention to? You're looking at their vitals, right? You're looking at the vital signs because the vitals tell you on a moment by moment basis, what do I do with this patient? Do I prescribe them this medicine? Do I rush them to emergency surgery? What do I do? So, so your, to answer your question is, it's a little bit too far out to predict. My, my best guess would say yes. When, when things start to settle down, do I think that a bunch of inventory is going to hit the market? I absolutely do. I really, absolutely. really do. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I think we're actually going to see a flood in the market before that point because people went through a recession in 2007 and it hit everyone really hard. And what did they learn from that time? They learned that you want to sell at the beginning of the recession, not in the middle of it. If you sell in the beginning, that's the best possible price you will get in that time. So if you don't think you can keep your home right now, and if you have a situation where you have to sell, the best price that you would have gotten was last week. And, and I don't mean that as a joke. That's really the truth. The best price you would have got was last week. So that's my answer to you. But we're going to pay attention to the vitals. And we're going to, you, you need to get with a local agent who really knows the market well, and you need to pay attention to inventory and demand. And also what time of the year you're putting your home on the market is critical as well. So, um, so having said that, um, those, are, those are the most important points that I think I wanted to cover. And my, my kind of parting advice to agents is a couple of things, just from a, a really heartfelt level. Number one, you need absolutely nothing to be happy and joyful. You can be just as happy and joyful broke as you can be with a million dollars in your bank account. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of really unhappy, wealthy people. And I know a lot of really happy, broke people. So just remember that when you go home to your family every day, put the biggest smile you can on your face and just say, thank God that I'm alive. Thank God that I'm healthy. And if you're rich in friendships, you, you are the wealthiest person on earth. So reach out to your friends and FaceTime right now. The second thing uh, that I want to part with is leaders take initiative. Followers wait for protocol. Leaders take initiative. Followers wait for protocol. Take initiative with, every, with anything. Nobody knows what to do right now. You guys, we're just a compilation of our best guesses. Everyone is living this one day at a time. So take the best step that you think you can and experience the feedback. And if it doesn't work, then try a new method. But take initiative. Call, call your clients. Call your mortgage provider. Call your vendors. Um, do, do whatever you can, but stay in motion and, and make the best use of this time. I've gotten, a, I've gotten so much work done during this quarantine time, but I've also 
a lot of personal problem that I never would have, and what a blessing that is. So um, I ran over my time, but hopefully I was able to address some of those questions of, of what agents should do right now. Awesome. Well, Stephen, oh my gosh, all that fire you just spit was amazing. And I think, you know, I was taking notes. Everyone was taking notes. We all appreciate the passion and everything that you shared. I mean, the biggest thing that I took away from the million nuggets that you presented was leaders take initiative and followers follow protocol. And Absolutely. I think, Powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of us as realtors, we're all leaders, whether you know it or not, you're leading a transaction, you're leading people where they want to go. You're leading your family, you're leading your friends, you're leading your business. You're a leader. So take initiative and no one, the thing that's amazing about real estate is that it's a hundred percent commission, which means if we don't make the efforts to become a professional, like what Steven said, then we're not going to be paid like a professional. Just like when you want to be a great actor, you only get as good as you practice and you get only get as far as you're willing to put in the hard work. And so all of us need to remember that we're leaders. And if you don't feel like you're a leader, what does it look like? And what do you have to do to become a leader? Because if you're not a leader, you're not going to be able to lead other people or even lead yourself through this downshifting market. Great points, Anthony. So, um, so, so let's wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call. Um, Anthony, uh, let let's have them email you with any questions, or if anybody if anybody's on this webinar and they and you guys just want an honest conversation of should I sell my home, should I buy a home, and you don't want any of the sales realtor. Oh, the market's beautiful. Like, let's list today, and you just want some honest advice. Uh, Anthony, what's a good email for uh, for them to send information to? Yeah, you guys can send it to my email. I'll type it into the text. It's anthony at teammanzon.com. That's my email address. Reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm here. I want to help you guys. I think the more education that realtors have on how to make the process simple and safe for our buyers and sellers, it's more likely that they will be able to also educate their buyers and sellers and there'll be less craziness in the market. So it doesn't do me any good to hoard all this great information to myself because I may be good. However, if every other realtor is doing it wrong, it's just going to by the masses spread further than it needs to. And so that's why we're putting these things on because we want to help you guys educate your buyers and how to minimize this so we can all stay in this career that we all love and keep changing lives every single day. Great stuff, Anthony. All right, uh, Melissa, any parting comments? No, uh, I, I, yeah, I think I need to learn how to use this Zoom thing. I think I, I'm, okay, there we go. It's in this private. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Uh, no, you know what? You guys just took my breath away, actually. Just listening to you, Stephen, um, you know, we've been good friends for, for the last several years, and listening to the way that you, that you talk and that you promote uh, material is absolutely stellar. Anthony, same with you. Um, you know, I, I'm really not into tooting my own horn, but, you know, with the years of experience, I just, I couldn't have literally asked for better co-hosts than you and Anthony at, at this time. So I'm really grateful. You guys have given me a lot of really great information. And uh, I am, I wrote down uh, leaders uh, take initiative and followers wait for protocol. I have never heard that, and that is massively powerful for me. It really, really, truly is. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to get on this call with all of us tonight because I know that, that we're all struggling, and we all want to know. We all want answers, uh, but I think we're all here. Um, you know, find the people you trust. Uh, find the people that are staying in integrity. Uh, reach out to them. You know, give me a call. Let me know what I can do to help you here in San Diego, North County. Call Anthony Manzon if you, you know, have concerns or, you know, you want to talk to somebody in South Bay. And then call Stephen Hurd for all of your, you know, uh, Orange County uh, referrals or questions. We're all here to help you. And that's what I want to say. So thank you for letting me uh, be here. And I'm super glad you guys, uh, you guys are with me. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, make it a powerful day. Thanks again for your time. You guys reach out anytime. Let's continue to change lives every single day, and we'll all get to the other side. I promise you that. Thank you. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.